Hi there, and welcome to Module 5, Machine Learning Pipelines Validation and Testing. In previous modules, we covered what machine learning monitoring is, which metrics and tests to use, and what to consider in machine learning monitoring design. Now let's get to practice. This is a code-focused module. We will learn how to apply and implement data and model quality tests as a part of a pipeline. If you deal with batch models, such test-based monitoring can often cover all your needs. For online models, this can be a part of your setup. You can run batch checks when you get labeled data or retrain the models. You will go through an end-to-end -end pipeline using a toy dataset. You will train a model and design a test for data and model quality. You will also explore how to automate it using tools like Airflow, Prefect, and MFlow. In this video, we are going to discuss the main concepts of machine learning pipelines, validation, and testing. We will start from the gentle introduction into data and machine learning pipeline testing. First of all, let's discuss when do we need a testing. Basically, there are a lot of different steps in machine learning lifecycle, and we need to cover it by tests to make sure that everything works correctly. So first of all, it's important to test our input data, because we know that if you have some garbage data as an input, it will influence the whole pipeline. Also, we can perform some checks after we train or retrain our model, because we need to check the quality of the retrained model, right? It's very important to validate the incoming data together with the model's output, because sometimes we can catch pretty important signals when the output of model changes unexpectedly, right? And finally, it's very important to regularly test the ongoing model quality in order to be able to detect the moment when quality drops and react. So, well, there are a lot of moments when we need to perform the checks, and let's see what types of checks this can be. So, how to perform testing? Basically, the tests are metrics which we calculate on top of our data with a certain conditions. Such tests can be a column level, in this case it's related to the specific feature, for example, right? And it can be a dataset level. In this case, you calculate the metric which related to the whole data, right? And you can formulate as the test almost everything. It can be assertion of feature values or expectations about the model quality or a specific segment. Whatever you can measure, you can design as a test. You can group your tests individual tests in a test suite, right? This is basically a combination of tests, and for each individual test you can design test criticality. So a test can be either very critical or just something that you want to be worried about, right? And you can then define an alerting strategy based on the number of tests or based on the number of critical tests or whatever, right? And well, this helps you to standardize evaluations and share best practices among your team. Together with individual tests and test suites, you need to come up with the conditions, because your testing approach needs to know when to alert, right? When to like the highlight the red lamp for you. For doing that, you can use different strategies. The first strategy is to create the reference dataset, because quite often it's much more convenient than creating the individual condition for each test, right? This is a great for a certain type of tests, like checking column types, right? And also this is very convenient for ad hoc testing. For example, if you just received a new batch of data and you want to quickly analyze and understand what's going on, right? So instead of spending a lot of time into designing test conditions, you can just get your reference data, which can be the previous batch, right, and see what's going on there. But be careful with designing alerting. Auto-generated conditions are never perfect, right? You can miss something important or get a lot of false alerts. The other approach is to manually define each test condition so that you can specify for each individual test when to react, right? You passed all conditions yourself and you do not need to have any additional data. And actually, you can even combine both approaches, right? In this case, you need to pass both conditions for some tests where you're certain about some specific values, right? And for all the rest tests, you need to have the reference data set so that the system can automatically calculate test conditions for you. This is possible in evidently testing. 
Finally, it's important to know how you can automate such testing because you don't always want to do it ad hoc, right? Sometimes you just want to automate your testing together with the model application automation, right? So uh, the first way how you can do that is by using the tools like workflow managers. It can be Airflow, Kubeflow, or Prefect, or whatever you use to run your machine learning model in batch, and you can just create the specific steps for testing and run your tests after the specific part of your pipeline. You also can log and record test results. If you use some tools for metrics logging, right, you can also log there the results of your tests. For instance, many of us use tools like MLflow to log model metrics, right, and you can also log their test results. And evidently, we have a special panels designed for tests where you can visualize the results for each individual test for each batch of data or aggregated information about how many tests failed and how many tests succeeded. Later, during this module, we are going to apply the, all those learnings to a toy dataset, which is bank marketing data. This is publicly available dataset, and this case is the marketing campaign. The idea is that bank try to run the phone marketing campaign, where they try to persuade the clients to subscribe to a term deposit, right? And the idea is to predict whether the client will subscribe or not, and this is why we have the delayed ground truth, because quite often it takes some time in order to think, right, and then decide whether to subscribe or not. We also have quite a lot of feature there. It's quite a lot of personal data, average balance, information about the previous contacts and credit history. So based on those data, we need to predict the campaign outcome. We are going to design training pipeline as well as the prediction pipeline. During the training pipeline, we will do data preparation, some feature calculation, then model training and scoring, right? And we are going to introduce a certain checks to our training pipeline. It will be checked for raw data quality, right, even before feature engineering, then check features quality after feature engineering, and check model quality after we train a model. Then we will create the prediction pipeline, where we will simulate the production usage of our model in a batch scenario. So we are going to simulate that we receive data in batch mode, and we apply to new batch of data some feature engineering, right? And then we uh, actually predict the values based on those features, and we are going to introduce quite a lot of checks to this process, right? So we are going to check the data quality for raw data on top of new batches of data. We are going to apply the data quality checks for features calculated over a new batch of data. Then we are going to score models output. After we received the labeled data, we are going to check models quality. And finally, based on those quality, you can decide whether to retrain model or not to retrain. So that's our plan and let's go to the practice.